How can we meet the people around us and do a better job of, I don't know, making friends? That's what we're going to talk about today. Sometimes it's just great to bring new people into the mix. John Oates. Today we're going to talk about that, how we can meet people and bring new people into our lives. I'm going to try a little bit different format for this podcast. I'm trying to figure out ways that I can bring it back to every week. I'm honestly having a bit of a podcast crisis where I'm wondering what I'm doing. Uh, There was something that came along in the software. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but it made me kind of question what I'm doing. And so if you have thoughts about what you would like this podcast to be, are you here because I talk about books? Are you here because I talk about just good advice that you may want to try to make your life a little bit better? You can email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I want to know what you think as listeners, because it's important to me, what it is you're looking for in this podcast. I started this podcast because I got sick of all the interview podcasts. So I would have you on my podcast and I say, oh, you know what? I love your new book. It's so amazing. And then I go on your podcast and then you say, oh, Jill, I love your new book. It's so great. And I just got tired of it. I wanted someone to, first of all, review books I never even heard of. There's so many good books out there. But if you're not the kind of person who goes on another person's podcast, then maybe you've never even heard of those books. So I wanted to bring forward a whole new set of books. Secondly, I don't expect people are going to do all the different pieces of advice in this podcast. I think that it's a pick and choose kind of thing. You'll hear it from me too. Like, this is my problem. I really focused on this and this book helped me a lot. Or I like this book. I thought I had good advice, but this is not really my problem in life. And this is how I go about solving these kinds of problems. That's kind of my feel for it is that I just hope that these give you a wide enough, I don't know, I I call it a gumball. Like this is a gumball machine with all sorts of different ideas in it. And I try not to stick to the same thing twice, which is another one of your problems because they tell you in podcasting, you should pick a niche, a small topic. So I'm going to tell you how to bullet journal better than any other podcast talks about bullet journaling. But I'm really not that kind of person. I like to talk about different topics. And so that they will tell you is a big fatal mistake of podcasting is to talk about a lot of topics. But my idea is, is that when you're listening to these podcasts, you might hit one of them and say, oh, well, that's something I need help with. Or, "Hmm, you know, that's not my thing, but maybe I'll listen anyway. No, I'm not really interested in listening to that at all. That's kind of my theory behind this podcast. Is I just going to throw out some good books, some good ideas, and if it hits on something that you've been trying to work on for a long, long time, maybe it's going to help you out in that particular situation. So again, please email me. I'm sort of having a crisis of what I can do to better serve you, or maybe go to YouTube, or maybe not have these podcasts, or something like that. I I would really love to hear from you what you think is a good direction to go. So again, we're going to talk about how to meet more people And I still feel fundamentally that from the podcast, and it's true in my own life too, our world's got a lot smaller. We stopped seeing as many people, primarily because maybe some of those people moved. They moved out of town or I had clubs. I was a part of Toastmasters. And during the pandemic, my Toastmasters group, I think, died. And so then I just stopped going. So there were a few clubs I belonged to before the pandemic that no longer exist. But not only that, I worked in an office. And so I used to do things with my office. Now I work remotely for an organization 2,600 miles away, and I don't work in that office anymore. And so I think that a lot of us are wondering, how can I make my world as rich again? How can I have that life I had and meet new people? And sometimes it's just about the people around us, that we don't have to go and join a club. Maybe it's our next door neighbor. Maybe it's the person I see walking the dog every day. I'll give you a bit of interesting thing. So I bought a new car and I still have the old car. I'm still trying to decide what I'm going to do with it. And for the first time, a bunch of neighbors who I've never talked to before started coming up to me and going, oh, hey, I'm Sarah who lives down the street. Did you just get a new car? Oh, it's a pretty color. What are you going to do with the old car? What is that thing on top? It's a roof tent, by the way. What just talking to them for the first time. And so suddenly we had this conversation piece that opened up a chance for us to talk. Oh, well, what's your dog's name? What kind of dog is that? And now I wave at people a lot more than I used to. And it was all because I had a topic of conversation I could talk to people around me. 
And I think it's hard sometimes. First of all, meeting new people. Hmm, gosh, it takes a, a little bit of endurance, right? Sometimes there are people you say hi to and they don't say hi back or they're you know not interested in chit-chatting with you here and there. He'll meet a neighbor who is around you who says, you know what? I've always wanted to go see Aurora Borealis too. What about the next time you go out, you bring me with you or we could go together or something like that. That's not going to be everybody. And so it does take endurance. And I think we don't like social endurance. I think when we feel that we said hi to a neighbor and they didn't really say hi back, we feel sad about it. And so we do need each other. We need social connections. And we need connections from men and women, people the same as us, people different from us. I can tell you, I go to a church and I see a lot of people in my church. But, you know, I still need to know people and be friends with people outside my church. So I think we have to increase the size of our world. And if we ever hope to get connections with other people, good friendships, and again, really great friendships start with really good friendships, which goes back to, hey, I just met you at the grocery store and we talked at the register for five minutes, or you saw my new car and we said, hey, at one point, some friendships will take off and at other points they won't. And if we don't start bringing ourselves out there, having a little bit of endurance, making sure that we uh, try really hard to say hello to our next door neighbor, we'll never meet anybody and we'll end up feeling lonely. I heard that, you know, England has such a loneliness crisis that they now hired a minister of loneliness. It's sad. And you see a lot of people talk about that too. And I think that some of the ways my, my um, best friend, what she did is she started taking walks. And so she walks around her neighborhood. She started to get to know people in her neighborhood or getting to chance to chit chat with people that she knows mildly. Oh, you know, that person is Sally and that person is Marge and this person has a kid that goes to the school. And as you start throwing yourself out there a little bit, that's when you start meeting people. I have another friend, I think, that she moved to a new town and she didn't have a lot of friends that she knew. And so she picked up a hobby and started going to a club of this hobby. And now she knows a bunch of people go to lunch, talk about this hobby. But then they start talking about other things, too. And now they're great friends and they've been great friends for a really long time. It all starts with really small steps. It does. Going for walks, joining a small club, being in Toastmasters, picking up a hobby, showing up for wine and painting classes, anything like that. For me, getting a car has been an entryway for me meeting a bunch of new people. Going out there and meeting people is just as easy. But like I said, just going for a walk and saying, hey, or if you want to learn more, is a book called Start With Hello and Other Simple Ways to Live as Neighbors by Shannon Martin. So she just wants you to get out there and start making simple steps so that you can get a chance to meet people. If you're an introvert, you can find ways that you can meet people. You really can. It might be smaller steps for you because you might be able to go a longer period of time without having friends or knowing people because you think, that's okay, I do just fine by myself. I grew up as an only child. My brother also grew up as an only child. One thing about only children is we're awesome at entertaining ourselves. We can entertain ourselves forever and ever. I could live in this house like I did in the pandemic and entertain myself for three years and not think, hmm, I run out of things to do. I am never going to run out of things to do. <laughs> so either you're an introvert or you're very good at entertaining yourself. I'm an extrovert, but still good at entertaining myself. Or maybe you're like very shy. I would say in the cases of some of my friends, they're very shy. You know how I met my best friend? It, we were in the dorms and there was a fire drill at two in the morning. And I obnoxiously came downstairs with water pistols and said, where's the fire? I'll put it out because I was revved up as an extrovert. Meanwhile, my poor introverted friend who was a little bit shy just looked at me like, you're the last person I want to talk to. And I don't know, just through some common people we knew, we ended up becoming friends. We were inseparable. Her husband also inseparable. But it took time. It was awkward at the beginning, but we got there, right? 
And so the one thing that you have to know that if you're going to make more friends is that you have to start just making simple connections. Like I said, join a club, talk to someone at work you never talked to, talk to people at the refrigerator at your work, or just uh, do something interesting in the front yard and people will ask you about it. But relationships take a while to build. They're not going to be friendships right away, but they're all going to start, like the book says, with hello, with something very simple. A share, and she says, like a shared laugh, a helping hand. I met one of my neighbors because he got his car stuck right in front of my driveway. I ran out there with a shovel and we started digging him out. And then I pushed his car out of the snow ditch. And so we got a chance to say hi. One summer came around and we got to know each other a little bit. Silly ways of meeting people, but they can last a long time. And if you're not going to be best friends or even close friends or do things together, you're just neighbors, you know. And so I've been doing that dedicatedly. I've been trying to get to know my neighbors better, say hi, ask them how they're doing, as compared to just keeping my headphones on and mowing the lawn. The book goes into a lot of different ways where you can make friends and do it simply. And she talks about windows are better than mirrors, meaning, you know, having transparency. You're not supposed to reflect what that other person is and mirror their lives back to them. That's boring. I mean, do you want to become friends with just you all over again? Or do you want someone who's transparent where you can see what kind of person they are? So instead, we're going to make connections when we see that person as, as who they really are. And we start to listen. We actually listen to what they're saying. We don't have a political or agenda to them. You know, sometimes you'll see that. I, I talked to my neighbor once. And she started chit-chatting with me in my driveway for a little bit. And at the end, she was really just hijacking me so that, one, I will vote the way she wanted me to vote. And two, I will put a yard sign in my yard because I live on the corner. So then I felt, oh, well, you're just using me because you just wanted to use my yard. Instead, have no agenda. Just listen to people. Join in on conversations. And, and she says in this book to be normal. And I like this, too, to get over yourselves. You know, this isn't a place for you to make yourself look awesome or important or better than they are. But instead, be honest and vulnerable and sometimes be silly and just kind of be yourself and, and don't try to have any sort of agenda when it comes to you or when it comes to anything. And she said that one of the best ways that we can live as neighbors and build relationship has become interdependent. We live in a society that values independence. And I like independence. I feel strong when I'm independent. But we don't make friendships. We don't make bonds that way. I think one of the things I did wrong with one of the boyfriends I had for a little bit is at one point he said something to the fact that he's like, you're so good at taking yourself, I don't feel like you need me. And you know what? He was absolutely right. I have lived my life so that I can do everything myself, so that I can take care of myself. My mom, who was married to a guy who was drinking too much, she needed him. I didn't want that. And you know what? It destroyed my relationship with this guy because he felt like I never needed him. So interdependence, it doesn't mean you're going to be totally dependent on someone. But it means that you both depend on each other. And she said that's her favorite way to building a strong relationship. She also says having curiosity is a good way to go. I like this too. She says that an open door is better than perfect decor. I told you before that when I sat there and I thought about having my friend over, that we do this thing where uh, we have breakfast every month and catch up with each other. And she always had me over to her house and I took a bold step, which was hard for me to have her over to my house because I have projects I'm working on in the house. I'm working on wood floors. I have horrible wallpaper that I need to get down and paint instead. And my house was so imperfect. I've always wanted to be that person who had people over um, from church come over, you know, and uh, have a Bible study or, you know, have a, a lunch or something like that. But my house was never nice enough. And so I took that first step of inviting my friend over for breakfast, where I made breakfast. And she's like, it's fine. You know, I, I, this is something that has kept me apart from people for the last, I don't know, 20 years. And instead, I stepped out and I was finally able to do something about it. 
She says instead, you know, of trying to gain perfection, she says, quote, swipe on some chapstick, open a bag of chips and let it go wherever it takes you. It'll be enough. So I like that idea of having that framework where we can start building communities, getting to know each other better. And, you know, I think that's where she says, get over ourselves. Quit thinking about how straight your coffee table is or how good your chair is and just start saying hello. Whether you're on a walk, in a driveway, or you've decided to go ahead and open a bag of chip and bring someone you just met over to watch a movie. Whatever it is, take that first step. So my challenge to you is to take that first step. Is there someone that you have never said hello to that you could say hello to? Let's just start small and try that out. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Again, I'm looking for feedback on this podcast. I want to know what you want out of this podcast. You know, are you interested in the books? Are you interested in me sort of just talking about a topic and sort of saying how people get out of a certain situation. I'm kind of interested in what is interesting to you. So again, email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. I'd love to hear from you. You can also find me on Twitter. And remember, our walk to just meeting our next neighbor starts with small steps, maybe on a walk.